What's up guys, my name is Dari and I hope that you have a wonderful day. In this video, I want to talk a little bit about eloquent serialization. Later on, when we're going to work with APIs, you often need to convert arrays to JSON. And before we continue on guys, I want to start using my Instagram more. So if you haven't followed me on it and you're interested in more personal stuff about me, I've added a link in the description, so go check it out and give me a follow. All right, so what we've done so far was doing a request to the database in order to find one or multiple rows. Now, whenever you try to return multiple rows, you're returning a collection, which you can see as an array on steroids. But what if you want to convert it into a string? That's when you could use serialization. If you have a complex array or an object, you want to convert that into a string. And that specific string is usually a JSON and web-based context. Serialization can be very complex for database records. And in my opinion, this is where ORM falls short. But Laravel comes with two very powerful methods that we could use. And that's the two array and two JSON methods. So before we test it out, let's hop to our index.blade.php file. Let's open it. Let's get rid of every piece of Laravel because we're not going to use an array anymore. So every ID is as well, but we're going to work with a string, which is in JSON. And don't close off the file because we will return it in a second when we're done. Let's open our cars controller. Let's go right inside of our index. Right now, we're returning a collection. So let me show that to you. Let's say far underscore dump variable cars. Save it. Let's hop to the browser. Refresh it. And you can see that we have an eloquent collection right here. We don't have a car in our database, so let's add one. Audi 1908, this is my Audi description, submit it. And once again, we have an object, which is a collection with this specific data inside of it. Now we can convert this to a string. So let's hop to Visual Studio Code and right after our all method, let's add another access operator called to array. Save it, let's go to Google Chrome. Refresh it and don't look at this right now, but look at what is far dumped on the screen. We have an array with everything that we need inside of it. All right, let's go back to Visual Studio Code. Let's get rid of the far dump. Let's go back to our index plate and let's go right above our section and let's just print something out. So let's say add for each. Our collection is called cars or our array, excuse me add cars as one single car. Printing out an array is a little bit different than a collection. What we used to do is saying car, access operator, name. What we need to do right now is to add brackets, single quotes, name. Save it, go to Chrome, refresh it, and Audi has been printed out as you could see. Now you could also convert it to a JSON, and to do that, we need to go back to our controller and only replace to array to, well, you probably guessed it, to JSON. Let's far dump it once again. So far underscore dump cars, save it, Google Chrome, refresh it. And you can see that the output or the far dump is a string with multiple values in here, but our loop isn't working anymore. So what's going on right here? Well, you usually don't convert a collection into a JSON object but you do convert it to an array. JSON is mostly used for API stuff, which we will cover later on. Well, as you can see right here, we have an opening double quote right here and a closing one right here. So JSON will convert it to a long string sentence. So we can't loop over it. So what we need to do is to decode it. So let's go to Visual Studio Code, right below our cars, let's say cars again. Let's set it equal to JSON underscore decode variable cars. Save it. Refresh the browser. And you can see that our JSON have been converted to an object, which is a generic PHP empty class. Now to fix our UI, let's go to Visual Studio Code. Let's get rid of name. Let's say name again with the access operator. Go to Chrome. Refresh the page, and well, you can see that we have one row right here, but we've deleted all of our UI stuff. So let me get rid of the far dump to show it to you. Save it, Google Chrome, refresh it, and Audi is printed out right here. 
As you just saw, well, let me undo it. You can see that JSON will print out everything. We have our updated at, our created at, the description, found it, name, and ID. Sometimes you just don't want that. You don't want to send back every single database information that you'll have in your APIs. What Eloquent allows us to do is to hide certain attributes if we cast it to JSON. So in order to do that, we need to hop to our model and right below our fillable, we can create a new property protected called hidden. And let's set it equal to an array. And inside our array, we need to pass in attributes that we would like to hide. Now, right now, we don't really have data that can't be shared with others, right? We have our name, found it, description. But what if you have a password or let's say a remember token? Now, that's when this is very, very handy to use. And in our case, let's just say that we want to hide our ID just to show you what it is. Save it, Chrome, refresh it. And as you can see, our ID has been deleted or removed right inside of our object. So let's add our name, found it, and the description, just to test it out. Save it, go back to Chrome, and we have only our created ad and updated ad. But let's undo it. So let's just get rid of ID as well, and let's just say updated underscore ad. I think this looks better because we don't actually use it. There's also an option to show attributes. So instead of blacklisting them, we could whitelist them. So let's create a new property. Let's say protect it. Property name is visible. Let's set it equal to brackets. And inside the brackets, we need to add the names that we would like to show. So let's say that we want to show the name, found it, and the description. Save it, go back to Chrome. And you can see that one thing has been changed right here because our created ad has been removed. So it only shows the columns or the values that we have added inside our visible. So if we add updated or created underscore ad, save it, refresh it, our created ad has been added. What we're doing right now is testing it on the JSON object, but we could also test it on array. So let's change to JSON to to array. We need a var dump, but we don't need to decode it anymore. Save it, go back to Chrome, and the output is exactly the same. And if we, let's say, remove created ad, save it, refresh the browser, and our created ad has been deleted. Thanks for watching this video. If you do like my content and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, click on that subscribe button.